faster just to get to where, where we are. Sometimes I blab, so just let me know, but I'll do what I can. We, 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 I, yeah. I have no time constraints, so let me know. Yeah, I'm, I apologize so much. I, I'm glad I checked. I'm glad I checked. But yeah, I just now hit the record button, Nicole. Um, so I apologize so so much. It's, it's all good. Don't worry. Okay. So, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. This is Chad Marco, and we are interviewing another transgender individual. Uh, please introduce yourself to uh my small channel my small uh fan base uh hello small channel and fan base my name is nicole um i'm 29 years old from minnesota and uh thank you for having me okay um so let's get right into uh, oh, oh yeah before we start uh how old are you 29 29 um and what is the gender you identify as um uh, female I'm, I'm, a, I'm a male to female, but I identify as female. Okay. Um, so let's get right into the questions right from the beginning. These are the first times you, you're going to be hearing these questions. Okay. Oh yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> so did your parents have any understanding or consideration for the possibility that their child may be transgender or did you come to this conclusion all of your own in private over time because you know there's some parents they're they're more liberal and they're aware of transgender issues i've seen i know it's not like anywhere close to the majority but i've seen parents who do things like they'll wait a while and let the child select their own gender like so were your parents like super progressive liberal about it or was it something that you had to pretty much deal with on your own um so my my family wasn't really like, you know, we're kind of old school. So you know, I'm I'm almost thirty. Uh, we didn't really come from that generation where like, oh, we're gonna select your gender today. Like that's not really a thing that we did back then. Um, honestly speaking, my family just kind of thought I was gay growing up. So you know, the kind of progression into just being transgender was kind of normal for them. There was no real shock. If that answers your question. Okay, and. Um... So oftentimes when you talk to someone who has an alternative sexuality or even a fetish, when you dive into their past, you can find certain hints or evidence of where these aspects of their character or preferences may have began. When you think back, where do you see the earliest signs that ultimately led to you deciding to transition? Um... I don't know if there was uh, necessarily like a sign that led to my transition. Um, you know, from as young as I can remember, I was always kind of just, I was more aligned towards the feminine side of everything. Um, growing up in school, I, I, I wasn't in a private school or anything, but um, my entire school district up until from, from maybe fourth grade all the way through high school, we had uniforms. So I couldn't really express myself the way I wanted to in school. So I would do that outside of school. So, you know, going to friends' houses or just go, being at home, going out, whatever. Um, that's when I would really be who I was. Um, I don't know if that led me to being transgender, if, if I misunderstood your question. No, I, I um, mean, because I, it's, it's just that oftentimes with someone who's in your position, they're going to be like, you can look back and see, okay, it. it when I look back and I look at these moments or these things that I did, it makes sense that, okay, this is where I am today. Um, kind of like with serial killers and how they might think back to, Oh, I just, I used to torture small animals. <laughs> maybe yeah. that's, maybe that's why I'm killing motherfuckers now. So, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I guess if we're gonna like if we're attributing it to, attributing it to actions, it's something like oh I uh, uh, I was always trying to oh maybe try on makeup or wear more feminine clothing um, things like that. But it wasn't really like a decision like oh should I actually do this? It was like oh no I want to do that. That's just it it was an, it was a calling. I was like all right that's what I want to do, so I did it. Yeah, or, or um, even like i've heard stories of of uh and this is kind of a, a different group entirely but just another example of what i'm talking about is like it could be someone who uh maybe went on to uh 
play basketball professionally and then they might think back and say oh man like when i was four i was always picking up basketballs and throwing them around or so you know just all right yeah it's the difference between when i was four i was throwing around basketballs versus when i was four someone threw a basketball my way and from that moment i knew i wanted to play basketball it was like yeah. that person has a natural urge to pick up that ball themselves and do it and for me it was I have this natural urge just to be who I was and that was be as feminine as possible or within my power. And you felt a natural inclination towards femininity, basically. A million percent, yes. Okay. So it's very common with LGBT people that there is a period of confusion, denial, or even self-hate regarding their own sexual preferences or identity. Did you experience this at all or was it a more smooth process for you? Um, I never really experienced any self-hate uh, at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, there, I'm sure I've regretted things I've done in the past for X, Y or Y or Z reasons. But no, I am. I'm totally happy with who I am. And yeah. So even as a teenager, because again, like it's, for some people, it's, it's harder to come to terms with having a sexuality that's not of the norm or being transgender. Uh, you never felt like any sort of fear or anxiety about how the how the world would treat you regarding your choice, uh, uh, your choice in terms of your sexual behaviors. No, uh, the world, fuck them. You know, the world is the world. They can't kiss my ass if they don't like me. Yeah. Um, the only real fear I felt is like if religion is an actual thing and there is a higher power that looks over us, then I'm kind of fucked. But aside from that, then no, I nothing at all. Okay, okay. So, are you a religious person? Um, my my family is religious. I I dabble. Um, I don't know if I'm hyper religious or not not hyper, but I don't know if I'm a little religious or not. I I like to believe that there is a God. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, I go to church every Sunday. I believe in this and that and that. That's, that's not who I am. Um, maybe agnostic would be the best way to put it. Yeah, I think that's, that's kind of how, I, how I, I feel as well. Uh, I just don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> I just, I just do my best. Exactly. No one really here does. It's all faith. That's kind of literally how they say it. it it's their faith. And that's totally valid. Yeah. So how did your family and friends react to your decision to transition? Was it positive or was it more of a negative thing? Um, how did they react? So my, my immediate family was totally fine with it. Um, I, I already had moved out by that point. I moved out at 17. So I didn't really like come out to my, my family. I just kind of texted them or I honestly don't know how they found out. I don't remember. It's been so long. Um, they were fine with it. Uh, obviously, I was somebody for a long time. So that learning for it, that process of, uh, you know, forgetting my older name, my older persona, you know, because my I changed. And that's just a, a learning process for them. Uh, for my friends, however, um, you know, I, I, I consider myself not to be the best friend or the best of friends. So, um, like, I... I how do I explain this without making myself sound horrible? Um, I have me time and I like doing things on me schedule. So when people wanted to go out and I would just be like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'd rather not. You know, eventually they just fall out of my life and that's fine with me. Um, I also cut out toxicity. I cut out people that I feel like are wasting my time. Uh, maybe I'm very shrewd. But I just, I don't know, I like living my life and people who get in the way of that or people I find annoying or anything like that, I, you know, say, fuck you, I'm, I'm done with you. Um, so for the small friend group that I had, uh, half of them were really not feeling it, really bigoted, and I learned that the hard way. Um, so they're gone, fuck them. The other half is cool with it. Yeah, I'm the, I'm pretty much the exact same way in terms of how I deal with people. I'm very quick to cut people off and I feel like um, I feel like sometimes people don't really understand that. Like I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and uh, he's in a very toxic relationship. And uh, sometimes he would come to me for advice and 
you know, my advice is always pretty simple with situations like that. Just cut them, break up, leave them, cut them off. And, and, and it's like he can't wrap his head around the idea of like cutting somebody off because they're adding negativity into your life. But I know me personally, I've always been that way. And like, I just can't accept negative or toxic people within my own personal space. So yeah, uh, exactly. Just, I don't have the time for that. Like I'm, I, I'm getting older. I grow, you're getting older, you grow. Why am I going to, I'm not your mom. I'm not your babysitter. You know, I'm not your sister. It's, I don't have to be here and deal with you. So either you get your shit together or you get out. And if you're not going to get out, I'm going to leave. And that's that. And then another thing I realized too, though, sometimes it's not even so much that there's something wrong with the other person. Sometimes people just aren't compatible. It, it doesn't even always have to be like this, this negative. Separation oh, sure. Of that's two. that's hundred percent true. Yeah. Sometimes people just don't just cannot, can, cannot, uh, really vibe together or just might not be on, on the same like vibration level to where it's, it, 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 they feel comfortable being around that person or have them in their lives. And that's why that point I, though, I don't think I'd be a friend with that person. Yeah, I just totally embrace cutting people off. So I, I completely understand you on that. Yeah, I'd rather have a very, very small group of like very close friends than, uh, you know, MySpace Tom and my 80,000 other friends who I don't know their names. Yeah. So you identify as female, but what I've noticed yeah. is that some transsexuals report somewhat unusual attraction patterns. They'll say things like, I feel more attracted to men after taking HRT or them preferring to date other transsexuals instead of men. Have you noticed anything similar and what are your own personal preferences? Um, have I noticed anything similar like in the community, you mean? Um, yeah, yeah, like when you look at when you look at other transsexuals cuz me personally, I just know that I've seen uh quite a few times where um transsexuals would say something along the lines of after taking hormone replacement therapy after being on it for six months or a year or two years they feel more attracted to men or maybe there's like i've also seen stories where they'll say they have like less of a sex drive so have you noticed these things in other people and within yourself as well um so less of a sex drive probably comes from the fact that there's less testosterone and that's kind of a huge, uh, you know, horny generator. Um, but as far as switching your switching sides, uh, you know, oh, I used to love girls. Now I love boys. Um, and me, that's never been the case. I have always, I think, leaned very heavy towards uh, males. Um, that's I find men attractive. I I it is what it is you know i uh, that that's my that's my personal preference and that hasn't changed it well, didn't change before it didn't change after of course i experimented and i figured out what i wanted but all that was even before hrt um a lot of people a lot of trans people and i wonder if i'm gonna get shot for saying this thing but i feel like a lot of trans people uh so it's either one of two things it's either in their head and they're only switching the gender that they prefer because they think it's more acceptable now, right? Like, oh, I am now finally a woman or I'm finally a man and I can express my interest in this gender and it's not gonna be seen by society as wrong or bad, you know? And so that's their gender euphoria switch. Um, but for others, I think that they are potentially, you know, again, crucify me, fuck it, whatever, I don't care. I feel like a lot of the people who do transit, okay, not a lot. Some of the people that we're talking about here who do a transition are maybe less desirable. Um, oh. And so, hmm? No, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, maybe it's the way that they look. Maybe it's the way that they act. Maybe it's the way that they maybe so that they handle themselves right so because of that less than desirable uh presence that they carry it's like-minded people are attracted to each other and so in the community since we're all really close to each other 
eventually those that closest becomes a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and then they're like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. I can't grab anyone else out here, so let's just fuck and let's go do it. And um, that's where that transient thing kind of starts. If, I, I, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm putting down here. So it sounds to me like you're saying that uh, someone who's transgender and might not be on the attractive side um, and would find themselves not really capable of attracting uh, uh, attractive men or normal men who would be into them or women who would be into them that they sort of settle for each other. Is that what you, is that what uh, you see, yeah. saying? Damn, that's kind of uh, and that's not a, that's not a bad thing. I think you know if if I think a lot of people settle. To be completely honest with you, look at how many people are older in relationships that they hate. Why do they hate it? Because they settled. That's that's like almost human nature because we're kind of scared of being alone, and settling is normal. I feel like they're just doing this in the transgender community, and it's normal for humans to want to settle. I'm just thinking that, particularly for this example. It is because, you know, you, 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 you tried and it didn't quite work out. That's all. Okay. So. I know it's mean, but. And yeah. no, I think that I, you know, uh, when you talk about the whole like settling thing and, and whatnot, that's, that's definitely true. A lot of people just end up um, settling for what they can get. I just think that. Um, it's not always a good idea because you'll find yourself locked into a relationship where you're not really happy. Uh, it's not really based on like real, uh, the real type of attraction that, that that's a, a exciting for you. Oh, and, I 100% and it's gonna, agree. And it's, it's going to keep you interested. And I think, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I've been single my whole life is that I've never really been a, been willing to settle for the, uh, what I would consider bad options that have always been, uh available to me so uh okay yeah so i i've been in a couple relationships i was actually married um oh, wow. and <laughs> wow you know, it's it's just it takes time to figure out what you want i'm not i'm not a stranger to sex i'm excuse me geez i'm not a stranger to sex i'm not a stranger to being in relationships i've had many different proposals not literal but you know, many different options presented to me and I choose what I want to choose. It's so this is not me coming from a place of bitterness or like holier than thou. It's just I feel like I can analyze the situation. So you're you're bragging that you're you're an attractive transgender that, that gets all the chasers. I think I'm yourself. a six. I think I'm a six. I think I'm like a six too, actually. If, I, if I'm being honest, you know, like typically I I'll mean, say there's stuff I can improve on. Uh, but you know, us sixes, we got to stand together and, you know, thank God that, um, a lot of, not a lot of, but a, a couple jobs out there see FFS as medically necessary. And I, I can't wait to become a seven or an eight. I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Um, so the, the next question is what's your personal stance on allowing children to transition at a younger age? Do you think there should be a limit in terms of how young someone should be before drastically altering their bodies with hormone replacement therapy or surgeries? I think it's a horrible idea. Uh, horrible. I don't think, um, when I, dude, if, if you told me when I was six, I could do whatever I wanted, I'd be in a rocket ship going to Mars. That doesn't mean that you should let me fucking do that. We don't know what we want when we're six. Now I understand what you mean. Even in my case, like I, I, I kind of knew I was kind of sure, but don't be stupid, stupid. You know, children are children. There's a show, there was a show, kids say the darndest things for a reason. Kids are, kids are stupid. Don't give that power to the children and the adult should know how to take care of the child. I'm not here to gatekeep people's growth, but come on, you can't let a child who doesn't know what they're saying or doing make such a drastic and non -rever non reversible in some situations decision. So now when when we say children, you know, there are different age ranges you could possibly be talking about. So do you think there is a certain age 
where there should be more consideration in terms of the options that would be available to someone that could potentially really be transgender? Um, whatever the age of consent is. Whatever the age, so 18, basically. More it depends on the part of the world you are. Because I'm in a 16 state where uh, the age of consent, yeah. last I checked, is 16. So you think yeah. it should be- I mean, if, if, yeah. Yeah, and see, because I was talking to the person I was talking to before on this was more, uh, what was was more so of the idea that uh, it, it should be an option that's available to children if it's like, of course, uh, make them go through a process of making sure this is something that's serious. But they you, definitely you can't ask a child to make that decision. You can't. You're gonna ask a nine year old like to make a life-changing decision that's ridiculous no you can't yeah yeah and see my my thing is because i've seen i've seen certain transgenders who you know they they feel like they had a a, a good enough understanding of their gender identity at a young age but they were prevented from taking the steps necessary to uh, alter their bodies according to what would have made them happy. And so that's that's the other side of it that I can kind of understand in which, you know, if you, yeah, if, if, if you had access to like something like hormone replacement therapy as a teenager, your body wouldn't have developed I into like, it's gonna be harder for you to achieve the, the look and, and body that's gonna be most comfortable for you if you have to wait until you're an adult to have that. Now, now I'm not uh, saying that's what should be or isn't. I'm just saying I can understand that particular uh, side of the argument. But like yeah, I, told, I can understand that. Yeah, but like I told the other person I was talking to, like if if I was if I was a parent and I had a child that uh, let's just say hypothetically 13, 14 years old, and then they come out as trans. Out what I what I would find difficult about it is like what you said. May what if they don't really understand what they're getting into? What if this is a phase? What if some? What if like they they're really just not mature enough to understand what they're doing, and they're going to go on to regret making these irreversible irreversible drastic changes to their body? But are then, we going to also ignore the detransitioners? Like, sure, people transition all the time, but people also detransition, and they realize that because yeah. it's. And then, but mind you, these are adults making these decisions, and then they realize it's not for them. So, if adults have a hard time formulating these decisions, how are we going to make a child also make that decision? Yeah, we, and, you can't. Yeah, and, and see, that's that's the other thing where it's like, if I if if I'm in a position where I can either stop them or allow them, and then I allow them, and they end up regretting it, then I'm gonna feel bad, like. I guess yeah, for you were me, the adult in the situation. You should have done something. That's how it's going to come up. Like, how dare you, you know, not stick up for your child in a situation where you knew that anything could have happened. You, you should have been wise enough, yada, yada. That's, that's, yeah. that's a Fox News post in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah, it's it. What I find difficult about it is that ultimately, as the parent, it depends on like the narrative is going to depend on whether or not you made the right call. So if your child is legitimately transgender and you prevent them from being from getting the services or the treatment that they that they want or need, now you're the you're the conservative monster who wasn't understanding you ruined my life, dad. But on the other hand, if you allow it and they regret it, now you're the irresponsible parent that allowed a, ch a child to make that sort of decision in the first place. So that that's what I find tricky about that whole situation is that as the parent, you could make the wrong call. Like you really just don't know. And also I want to point out, like if you look in the, uh, like what people say about transitioning and what time you want to do it and all that stuff. Of course, obviously the younger you transition, the better, right? That's just how you get the best results. However, yeah. it's almost, it's almost widely accepted that if you transition by the time you're 16, 17, 18, you are, you're golden, you're locked. And you're sure maybe you have slight changes from your gender, but that's not going to define who you're going to be or look, look like in seven, 
eight years on HRT. At, at that, that's a, that's such a prime age, and it's also the age of consent. So what's yeah. the problem with that? I, I, there, it doesn't make sense to me. So you're saying that uh, that just going by the age of consent is more than enough. It's not like your body is going to uh, by. It's not like by that point uh, there's irreversible uh, changes to where you can't achieve a respectable level of femininity that would make you happy and comfortable in your own skin. Absolutely. And like another thing too is everyone has this mental image that they're going to look like a supermodel. Ugly women exist. Ugly men exist. You can just <laughs> yeah. look ugly. Like that's, yeah. that's totally okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I've noticed that there is sort of like this, uh, and, and I guess this applies to everyone to an extent, but there is, like this sense of like amongst transgenders that if, if you can't achieve a level of femininity to where you you can pass or you're close to passing that is almost like a failure of sorts um you can pass looking ugly still you can um you this can is pass. i think some it's true like how many people <laughs> it's tell me i'm wrong i mean i guess when when i think of someone who's who's transgender um uh, that that would be uh how, how do i say it uh like in, in my mind I, I almost see passing as being synonymous with being attractive and, and maybe that's just my fucked up mind but does uh, rosie o'donnell pass and, and see that's 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 what i'm saying like because it, it, it like you're 100 percent right i think that it, it, it's something in my mind that's like selectively deciding that passing is uh, is necessarily attractive but uh, yeah that, that's my thing you can be ugly and pass it, the, yeah. here's the thing here's the crux uh it's a lot of bone structure and uh, it, 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 it's all a lot of minor things but four or five six minor things add up to a major thing and then that triggers your brain and you're like okay that's a dude or and that's how you fail to pass so in a lot of cases surgery is kind of necessary uh Brow bone, nose, jaw, chin. These are certain things that um, are not as common in, in most cis women that are common in cis men. And so those are the things that are going to clock you. Those are the things that are going to make you stand out. You can be ugly, you can be attractive, but you're still going to get clocked if you have those specific features. Now, if you're taking HRT at an early age, you're not going to really develop all of that stuff. Sure, a lot of it's genetic. But the other part of it, you will be able, your, your fat is going to grow around certain things and shape some stuff out. You're going to look pretty decent and most of it's going to be masked and or you'll be able to down the line get surgery and fix things that are going to happen regardless so yeah passing is not looking like a, a beach babe it's just you know i could go on this forever but it's like understanding who you are because a lot of trans people tend to like they can be 21 22 23 and they dress like they're seven don't wear your fucking frilly dress don't wear your elsa dress outside with your flower crown okay you're not a pre pu you're not a pre pubescent child you're a grown ass adult and you should act like it and that clocks so many people and it's ridiculous and i, I oh I, I can't i can't stand <laughs> seeing that yeah um so i'm going off the script a little bit here because i kind of had a, a question just pop into my head uh but do you think you were more attractive as a as a male or after you transition into female because um i've seen on. i've seen like like pictures of before and after regarding transgenders and it's like sometimes like the before looks like an incel like just just be honest yeah. and, and then and then um, the, and the after is kind of cute and so i like what was your experience in terms of like when you think of the, the before and the after like, we're, like, is it is it is the experience about the same in terms of the number of people you can attract? Like, do you think you just get more attention and have more options now that you transition yes. versus when? Definitely. Yeah, I've had a lot more sex uh, post than pre. Because it, it's kind of it's kind of a joke on uh, some of the boards I go to on 4chan about like people will say something like, "Oh, if you're in cell, just take the pink pill and." Look, you'll be a female now, but at least you have options. 
Yeah, I guess that's kind of true. Um, it depends on, I guess, your end goal. That's you can. I don't think it's. If you want to transition as a fetish, go for it. Um, you know, I don't think you have to. There's no rules regarding why you're transitioning necessarily. Um, but I guess if you're having a hard time and you don't really care about what if you put it in the hole or if they put it in your hole, um, <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Okay. So. What about your stance on transgenders playing sports with their chosen gender, despite the possibility of them being at a severe advantage or disadvantage based on their natural physiology? Um, I, you either do one of two things. You uh, disallow transgender people from playing sports or you create a league of transgender people. That's my opinion. So you're for the transgender league idea. Um. To be honest with you, I'm kind of more in the league of don't allow trans people to play. So just tra no no sporting for you at all? Professional? No, I don't think so. Um, it, it, look at it in any way. Like, do you allow a, a, a female to male takes testosterone? I don't know a lot about how this works, but my understanding of, uh, of steroids is that it's literally testosterone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's taking steroids. That's literally against a lot of sporting codes oh. so that should not be allowed to be played it just period and if that's the case if we're doing that for male to female to male then we should follow suit and do the same thing for male to female just don't allow them to play sports they're on a, a different drug and you can't play that's it i never even looked at it like that i never because I, never, I guess when i look at it when i think of like in particular female to male trying to play with men 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 um, I always figured that whatever they were taking to achieve the level of masculinity that they have wouldn't be enough to close the gap anyway. But still, you make a, good, a solid point that it's still technically against the, the, the rules. It depends on the sport, too, obviously. But typically... Yeah, to taking, an extent. Um, yeah, go on. Taking... <clears throat> taking like any sort of like performance enhancers and, and that comes in all different shapes and, and forms and whatnot. But... Uh, I'm just saying, I never they literally. Like they just see uh, in the UFC, they disqualified. I, 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 it was a short clip. It could have been recent. It could have been a long time ago. But the dude took a hit off his inhaler because he was having an asthma attack, and he got disqualified. Wow. If you can't fucking take air, <laughs> then how are you supposed to be allowed to take either estrogen or testosterone before a fight? You can't. Sorry. You know what? I'm also game for intergender. If everyone could play with each other, then fine. Make if that's how the rules are gonna be. Then I'm totally okay with having a fucking all out brawl. Um, you know, female <laughs> and male football players in the same team. You can do <laughs> that, it. But they're gonna get crushed by the big the big black men on the field. Um, well, I mean if there's nobody, that's fine. Um, but in actual case, it it's if 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 a female's got a special team, if she's a great kicker, why not take her over a guy? Okay, yeah. I got <laughs> if you're fast as fuck. You know, think of it like quarterbacks. How many times do quarterbacks get tackled? Not often. They usually get touched or then they'll get thrown down. So if we're, you can treat a runner the same way. If they're going to slide, then you touch them. Like, there's lots of ways around this, but I don't think it's uh, you either unlock it so it's all genders, ban them entirely, or create a trans league. And I think um, the just don't letting them play all together is just where it should be and again i'm that i'm in that category i won't be able to play professionally and you know what that's a choice i made we all make choices with our decisions yeah. and that's not no, i think that's that's uh no like i think that's a very reasonable stance to take because obviously you understand that regardless of of how you identify there are real differences between uh a male to female or female to male and other members of their chosen uh, gender in terms of how their body There's works. differences in everybody, and even in cis people. Like, yeah, look yeah. how many people are African and play certain sports versus who are white and play certain sports. There's reasons why certain races are selected to play certain sports. It's because they're, it's just, it's a genetic thing. So of course, everyone's going to be different. And this is not necessarily a cis versus trans argument. It's everyone's different. And we have to understand where this difference falls in line with the view of professional sports yeah but obviously the the, the difference between men and women is is quite more drastic than say black and white but you're talking about like like physical 
things, physical activities and whatnot. Because, because, uh, on an average, I would agree. Yeah, on yeah, an average, like, because I just think back to these stories of like when they got, um, Serena Williams to go against, yeah, a you know, the. You know the the old story, or how they got a a high school soccer team to play against an adult professional female. No, it, okay, it, it was a high school boys team, a high school boys soccer team versus a professional female soccer team, and the boys just just wrecked them. And, and like that's not something that's not something you would normally see if it was say like high school basketball versus professional basketball players all male. Like the high schoolers would get completely crushed, but the difference between men and women is so extreme that high schoolers could beat the professional. Well, high school boys could beat the professional women. Um, I'm I'm not familiar with the story, but uh, I mean, look, if it happened, it happened. I can believe I've, that. I've, I've, look, <laughs> it does, I've just heard this story like s- several times. Maybe I've been in too many of, of these threads pertaining to this particular issue, but that's a story. Oh, that maybe. Always, I don't have no idea. That's a story that always gets, gets uh, thrown around. But I know for sure the, the story of Serena Williams um, or maybe her sister going against like a male tennis player who was ranked very low amongst amongst males. Like they got completely destroyed by this guy. And it's kind of yeah. Just, um, there's just, also the MMA fighter who like literally ended the other girl's career. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget. Uh, I can't remember anyone's name, but it was uh, she was male to female, and she got completely fucking. Rather, she demolished the girl. I think she broke her face literally. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she did lose. She wound up losing uh, to another cis woman. So it is possible. Yeah. Um, I think once you're among the elite, that kind of boundary sort of does fail a little bit. Um, but yes, on average, duh. Like, of course, there's a difference. Okay, so. Real quick, bathrooms, yay or nay? I think I, I kind of got an understanding of where you're going to go with this one. What do you mean? Uh, you know, bathrooms, should transgenders, hypothetically, the male to female transsexuals, should they be able to use cis female bathrooms? I think so. Oh, wow. That, that, that's surprising. You've been so conservative up until this point. <laughs> um so stay this at, is a stay, social thing i think yeah. if you socially pass then you can you should be able to use the bathroom okay so all right damn but and i think i think the last person i talked to says something similar to and, and i just think it's kind of sad because now it's like it's like it's about how 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 pretty you look almost now at this point it's like oh the the, the ugly huns um, you don't you don't get this pre- you know the ugly huns. <laughs> yeah, not- <laughs> they'll, they'll elect to not use the women's bathroom generally because they don't want to be ostracized. And I kind of get it. Um, I, don't, I don't think if I had to make a rule, ban it or legalize it for everybody. I think I'd be in favor of legalizing it simply because if someone wants to do something bad, they're going to do it regardless. There's no metal detectors for bathrooms. There's no security guards. There's no nothing. Anyone can walk in there and do whatever they want. So if someone needs to go fucking piss or poop, then they're gonna just do that. Uh, you're not gonna see an increase of rape or pedophilia because someone decided to use the bathroom. Uh, it, that, that's that's it's such a straw man ar- or red herring. I don't know the right uh, word to use here, but it's it's not an actual argument. People aren't in there going, like, "Ooh, I get to see a fully clothed woman walk into a stall." Like, uh, Pornhub exists. Like, if they want to get their fix there, they can do that. So, I I think if something would happen but how often it would happen is 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 the question i think yeah it's it's but it's not good it's I'm not cer- nearly as often as people think it might be yeah i'm certain it's not just gonna be this endless wave of of men saying okay now all i gotta do is put on a dress and go to the female bath, do the woman's bath. Yeah, that's and, not going to happen. That's it, that's but, not gonna happen. But but then there's gonna be that one guy in Florida that that, that does it, <laughs> and, then, and then it's just it's, and then it's gonna be all over the internet and social media. And then we told you, we told you. But yeah, yeah I, they'll I, do it regardless. They'll pick anything. Anyone will. If if you gave me enough time, I could formulate an argument to fight against anything. 
Yeah, it, it's kind of like, it's, I guess it's, it's similar to like the gun control argument. People will use the mass shootings. That, okay, well, these these mass shootings, this is a reason to ban guns, gun ownership for ordinary citizens. But then how many ordinary citizens or gun owners actually go out and, you know, commit crimes with their firearms that they purchase legally? Right, yeah, it, that, exactly. Okay, so... How do you feel about the strange relationship between transsexuals and what they sometimes refer to as chasers or the men who pursue them with romantic and or sexual interest? Because uh, to me, it seems like on one hand, transsexuals would like to have relationships with men, but not someone who specifically targets them, especially not because they just want a little bit of girl penis. Um, what do you mean by strange relationship? Do you mean, do it's like trans people lead on chasers or no, that? No, it's, we... it's, it's that, it's, it's that, uh, just even the whole term in of itself, right? Chaser, it has a negative connotation to it. The idea that you specifically want to date transgenders makes you a chaser. But then it's like, who else are you going to date other than someone who would want to date you? to begin with and i think that's what's kind of strange about it it's like it's almost like a shaming of the men that are attracted to them but then if you want to be with a man then you got to be with somebody who's interested in you um i think it's there's two ways to look at it if you're putting it from like okay see this is what i was saying i can i can make an argument for both cases here if we're trying to vilify them and make a chaser look bad then sure you know we can say I, I don't though. Like, are there weirdos out there? Yeah, there definitely are weirdos. Um, but at the end of the day, it's preference of preference. Like, you feel like Asian people, why is that bad? It's not racist, it's not bad. You can like whoever you want. And so if someone likes trans women, that's definitely a preference. Like, who, who's, who are we to say otherwise? Why, why do we get to say what their sexual preference should be? Um, now, if we're coming from a place of like negatively naming these people, I thought they were called like, Sims. It's it's only because it's about transgender people that we name them something differently. There, it, it is what it is. What do you call a man who relentlessly pursues a woman, does whatever they want for their attention, and will just oh my goodness, I it's anything to smell their feet. Yeah, right. What do we call that? It, it's yeah. a, it's a simp. Yeah, yeah. It it's they're synonymous. So I don't know. Uh, no, no. Because so so you're saying that that it's more so a is specifically targeting the men who are attracted to them but are themselves un unattractive either i don't think they're unattractive I, I like for example uh, i think a snow bunny is a white person who likes to sleep with black men right am i wrong uh yeah uh, and then there's also oh gosh i know there's others you throw them out if you remember them uh just preferences, like, yeah. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Is yellow fever a disease, or is that like a thing <laughs> yeah. that? No, that's when I think that's when white men are attracted to Asian attracted women, to or, or have a, a strong preference for Asian women. Right. Yeah. So there's there's nicknames for X race attracted to Y race. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, it's just someone attracted to trans people, and you can call him a chaser if you want to. I guess the name is not flattering. Uh, yeah, I mean, but... it's, it's it's definitely not flattering though. It, it like yeah. it, it seems like when I hear that term thrown around, again, it has a negative connotation to it. Like it, it's it, probably it, true. It's like to me, it has a a similar vibe to it when girls say, "Oh, he's a creep. He's a weirdo. He's he's you know like that." It has that sort of tone to it when when i see the term um used but i i kind of i kind of have my own like personal theory regarding this this kind of phenomenon and you just tell me if 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 i'm on the money or not but okay. i i think that some of it has to do more with like um i think i think there's a certain type of guy that has a preference for tr transgender or, or there are different types and i think that oftentimes when trans when transsexuals think of a chaser 
they're thinking of the guy that has like a porno fetish for them and then wants to pursue them for the sake of oh uh let me suck their cock let me get fucked by them i kind of feel like that's that's what they have in, a, in their head when they use the term chaser like that that particular type of guy that's attracted to transgenders but is going to want them to potentially engage in sex acts that they're not comfortable with or would not be compatible with them that's probably true uh i don't know if i would categorize it uh, i don't i'm not super deep into like i have my fair share of run-ins with people who i have labeled weird creep etc the word chaser has never entered my mind to describe them but it's entirely possible that i should have used that term <laughs> uh what made them weird uh it's a lot of obsession um mm. and a lot of obsession with specific things uh it's like you know a lot of people are like oh can you send me pictures of this specifically or the well the, the way that they all describe wanting to do things with me and it's always really weird and i don't like it i <laughs> just i you know if, if you wanted to do something you can just see me and we'll do something together you don't have to be weird it's like nice guys that's another way to put it you ever see like when nice guys talk in, t in text chat how they're super fucking weird and awkward and it's 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 that but sexual in nature for transgender people that's what i would call a creep so it's it's just that it's something about them that's that's off-putting no, I'm not saying this is true for all chasers. I, I think, I, I don't even like the term chaser, to be totally honest. I think it's stupid. Uh, okay. But, uh, it, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess the way I, the way I look at it is just that that's sort of the transsexual lingo for that weird guy I don't want to fuck. Kind of like how- Sure, I, I've never, I've, I guess I've never used it, but I, I can totally, I, I see where you're coming from. Um, that's not how I live my life. Like it's not how I viewed things before, but I'm sure that that's totally valid. Okay. So one thing I find interesting is that while trans acceptance is growing, it seems to me that men who date or have sex with transsexuals are still considered gay or fags by most people. Don't you think that's sort of contradictory that people will accept you as a woman, but question the sexuality of the men that date your kind? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with insecurity. Uh, like, <sighs> you see this even today with people who are dating someone taller. Like, if you're if the woman is taller than the man, then it's weird, air quotes, right? Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But a lot of people feel that way. Um, now, it's more obvious in this situation why people would view that that way. Um, but it just shows uh, a lack of total understanding for the individual like if you're out there calling someone gay because they're sleeping with a transgender person uh that's completely missing the point um and maybe you don't fully understand or accept trans women for who they are uh it's you should probably self-reflect and really think about if you are actually as accepting as you think you are yeah yeah i mean it's one thing if you're just like, okay, I don't believe in this idea that a, a man can turn into a woman or, or vice versa. Therefore, anyone who has sex with him is gay or lesbian, you know, whatever the case may be. But I just find it weird how it seems like more and more people at least claim to be accepting of um, transsexuals. But I don't see that same acceptance when it comes to the guys who are actually attracted to them and into them it, it, and really it's just, it seems like guys who like transsexuals are still like the butt of the joke more or less like well it's never... because there's still no trans acceptance like that's it, it's not on the guy it's on the girl uh, if if the guy was sleeping with any other race or any other look of girl do you think they would get the same flack no it's it's a, it's a hundred percent around the girl not the guy the guy gets the flack for it because they don't want to be seen as a seen as a villain for making fun of the girl but that's what it is they they're not accepting so you think that a lot of the trans the trans acceptance that we see on the surface is really just fake and phony it is um it's either it's either they're 
they misunderstand what acceptance actually is and they need to just think about it more or yeah or that it, or, or it's just fake because because to me i think that it's kind of gotten to a point where like um uh how, how do i say it? it's like i feel like if i if i go on twitch like this is a this is a hypothetical Let's say I'm a Twitch streamer and I have a big following and I'm on stream and then I go on this rant about how transgenders aren't really women or or men, depending on which which side we're talking about. Like I would I would potentially get in get in trouble for that on that particular platform. Like I could lose my account. I would get canceled potentially for yeah. saying something for, for saying something like that. And so what, what I'm saying is I think some people, it just seems like they go along with it because they don't want to deal with the consequences of the backlash of not going along with it and being seen as a bigot. But then, yeah. but, but, but then the thing is, it's still open season on the men who date transsexuals because nobody stands up for them the way somebody will stand up for the actual transsexuals themselves. Nobody stands up for the chasers or the guys who like transsexuals. Well, it's again, though, I, I, I don't, it's not about, it, it's easier to attack the guy than it is to attack the girl. Uh, because the girl won't get you canceled. Uh, rather the girl will get you canceled. If you attack her, the guy won't, you'll just make fun of the guy and you look like maybe a dick, but yeah, no one's going to like yeah. cancel you. Yeah, um, and, and, and it, it just all stems from the non-acceptance of trans people. Um, I'm not okay. I don't want to make it sound like I don't think trans people have no rights. I think, generally speaking, I think I'm pretty accommodated in life, and I'm, I don't. I never felt like I couldn't do something that I wanted to do. So I'm not going to sit here and say that. Um, you know, play Harry Potter all you want. I don't really fucking care. No one should. <laughs> yeah. um, but. People need to understand that if they're going to accept something, that means it's, it's just it's total acceptance. And if you're not accepting, you're not accepting. It, it, it's it's binary. It's A and B. If you are accepting, then it's fine. And someone who loves trans people is not fucking gay, or they could be. I don't fucking know. But like innately, the act of sleeping with a trans person is not a gay act. And that's side A. Side B is I'm not accepting. And no matter what I say, it's either that's it. It's not. I'm not accepting. Yeah, that, and that's pretty much how I see it. I just like for people to be consistent with how they express their views. And to me, it just seems like some people are just walking on eggshells uh, because on one hand, they just don't want to get in trouble. But on the other, if, if they can get away with making fun of the chasers or whatever, then they'll go ahead and do that. But um, I guess you got to kind of take it. It's an easy way to identify who is actually like not yeah, an ally. So. That's, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. So, um, in your experience and, and opinion for all the chasers out there, um, or just men who might be interested in dating someone who's transsexual, what are the keys to victory in this endeavor? What are the do's and don'ts of trying to date someone who's transsexual? Uh, okay. Let me ask, let me ask you a question. What are okay. the do's and don'ts of dating a woman? Do's and don'ts of dating a woman. <laughs> I, look, I'm not the guy to ask. I don't. I, I don't know how to get bitches. <laughs> I'm still a virgin. <laughs> no, the only reason why. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, the only reason why I asked that question though is because I don't feel like it's any different from how you would get anyone else. Like treat you with respect, have a common interest. Um, uh, let me, that it's not easy. I'm sorry. It's not hard to uh, get on my good side. Like it's just if we're in the same place, be 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 normal don't try to like touch me before i've like given you like permission to touch me don't that, i think that should be a normal thing um and by that i'm not meaning like oh don't hold the door for me don't touch my shoulder from laughing it's more like don't rub my shoulders in the middle of our conversation that's weird uh what just happened to me before um just be you be nice for me i think humor is like a humongous check mark if you can make me laugh that's like 50 percent of the job you've done um yeah and if we have two things in inch in common we're, we're gonna wind up sleeping together do you think all right so what about on the physical aspect of it like uh because 
there's this whole debate about how much looks matter to women. Um, and so in terms of yourself and other transsexuals, do, do you think like there's any difference in terms of like the balance of the importance between physical looks and attractiveness versus things like personality, um, finances and things of that nature? That I'm attracted to, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Because like men, we tend to be less concerned with things like money on the end of like what a, a woman brings to the table. We tend to look for like we're almost like like looks first and in terms of personality, just don't be fucking crazy. But uh -huh. people, pe people at least argue that women are somewhat different and more nuanced in, in, in what they're attracted to. And so, okay, yeah, like what's your, your, your perspective on that? Um, I think it's going to change on a person to person basis. I can only speak for myself. Um, for me, if you're, uh, if you're obese, I <laughs> don't want to be associated with that. Um, it just shows that you have a lack of respect for your body and that's, yeah. that's not what I'm about. Uh, if you smell, you can smell over there, not next to me. Um, I, you don't need to be successful. You can live at home with your mom. Like that's totally okay. You know, people oh. have their reasons for doing that. Well, um, I... yeah, it, it, it doesn't make you any less of a man. Like <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. Oh, great. Good for me then. Huh? Huh? I got you. <laughs> it's just you just have to have self-respect and a plan like if you're yeah. uh, would i you, do you know who asmongold is i assume you, you do oh 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 you, uh, you, you talking about me specifically yeah do you know who asmongold is a, a, uh, wait who as asmongold who, who is he's that the, okay, um it's the he's he's like one of the biggest wild streamers um bald <laughs> he he runs OTK. It's an organization. Uh, I I was only asking because he's one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. Um, okay. Would I date Asmongold? If me understanding that he's super popular and all that stuff, that's one thing. But assume uh, put the Twitch career aside. Assume he did everything he does now, um, but he wasn't famous for doing it. No, there's no chance in the world. He you know he lives in filth. He uh, stays at home all the time. Doesn't want to do anything. Um, he plays games. That's a common interest with me. But he also is just kind of not not my thing. It, 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 this this analogy doesn't work if you don't know who it is. Yeah, um, I don't. But in my mind, I'm seeing like some fat, sloppy dude who's like he's actually like, super, like super skinny. Okay, okay. So, but he, all right. So he just like like what dirty or something antisocial? Like no, he just he's just, yes, he's very antisocial. Um, but however, now me knowing he's super like into it, like that's his job. Yeah. I would date him only because I know that that's his job and he's grinding. Uh, I, my, my, my perspective on who I would date is someone who's focused on a future, has a plan that they know that they're going to want to set in motion or have already set in motion and they're working towards it. Like just have an aspiration, be nice, make me laugh. And you don't have to be super in shape. You just have to take at least decent care of your body and uh yeah it's have have I mean, some potential yeah you, you, you gotta be a man with some potential is what you're saying yeah yeah okay now obviously not everyone is a believer in the uh the idea that a man can transition uh to a woman and, and vice versa uh how do you feel like are you okay with that? Like, are you fine with people having a difference of opinion from you in terms of how you view gender and the transsexual phenomena, uh, the transsexual issue or phenomena? Uh, yeah, I'm fine with people having an inverse opinion or whatever. Like, so the, the, if you're asking for a cut and dry, yeah, I'm totally okay with people having a different opinion than me. Because. Because it, it, it does seem like uh, it does seem like kind of like what I was talking about earlier. If you express that kind of opinion on certain platforms or in certain situations, you could you could potentially lose out on opportunities. You could be 
uh, quote unquote canceled or there could be backlash. Now, this is more so pertaining to people who are like maybe uh, got some some fame, like social media fame or celebrity or something like that. But uh, do you think something like that is, is really fair for someone to have to go through like that sort of trouble just because they have an opposing view to uh, the idea of, you know, again, men being able to transition to female and whatnot? Uh, it depends on how you look at it, because a lot of people have extra baggage. It's not just that statement. They'll make three, four, five, six, seven more statements, and that buries them. Look at Ben Shapiro. He is very successful. He's a politician, or sort of. Uh, he has podcasts. He has a website. He's millions and millions of views on YouTube. He's not canceled, but he has direct contrary opinions to mine. Um, it, it just depends on how you frame your argument, and if you have reasons to feel a certain way and you can have those reasons people like the, the normies if you will who have similar opinions are just really rude about it um you know they're not going to hold a similar amount of it, it, it's it's different when it comes from someone who just hates you versus yeah. ben shapiro's kind of well articulated argument okay yeah it, it's uh so it's about how you present the argument. And obviously some people like, uh, it, it seems like some people, they really just want to go out of their way to hurt your feelings in the process oh, yeah. of expressing how they feel. It's not just about, this is what I think, you know, like, uh, like, how, how would I say? Like, if, if you were talking to someone um who didn't necessarily again believe in the idea of you know the whole the whole transsexual thing and then they go out of their way to refer to you as he he him he he even if they could avoid it you know exactly that, right it, that, that's just rude that could be interpreted as them really just trying to stir shit up just, just like like people might go into a a tranny porn thread on 4chan on the gift board or something and then just type he oh that's he like man you already know what this thread is about why why are you going into this this transsexual thread to point out like how you feel about the uh you, you know or express your opinion yeah on, like, it, it's, 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 I, i'll never understand it i'll never understand it like yeah. do you think like what what is your intended purpose are you trying to make me feel bad because it's, it's n not like you think two letters on the screen are going to make me feel bad like it, you get over yourself you're not important I, everyone no one on the internet's important it, it <laughs> fuck off buddy like no one cares about you you're just ruining a thread thanks yeah so so it's about respect at the end of the day if you can express how you feel without disrespecting the other person then yeah like here's a horrible example um some people think the earth is flat that's totally okay you can think that however when you start saying yeah the earth is flat and the jews told us the other story it's like okay oh well that's, <laughs> that's another yeah. wrench in here <laughs> yeah. oh yeah the, uh, the, the old jewish the uh jewish conspiracy the jews yeah. run the world yeah exactly yeah so the, the, those are you know you can have a weird or negative or contrary opinion to a lot of people no one's going to care until you start throwing those insults in there or being just hurtful for no reason and, and it's clear mm -hmm. when you're trying to do that yeah okay now do you think it's possible that some men or women who go on to become trans simply have an inclination towards behaviors not typically associated with their given gender and mistake that for being designated as the incorrect gender like why why would you need to identify as as another sex as opposed to just saying i'm a male who's more feminine or a female who's more masculine um both of those things can exist you can be a man who's more ma uh, a man who's more feminine or a female who's more masculine um or you can be trans both of those things are true statements um some people just are trans and some people are just men with feminine features. Someone who's more uh, androgynous or, or, or yeah, maybe, like, uh, yeah, like those, the, the, there are feminine males and there are male to females. And oh, yeah, both yeah. of them are entirely accurate. 
and valid. Though there's no reason why both of those do not exist or cannot exist. I was talking to somebody. Uh, I was chatting with him on Discord. I was trying to find people to to, uh, in, to interview, and uh, he said that he was a he he referred to himself as an HRT film boy. <laughs> <laughs> like like he, he recognized he recognized himself as a male but still would still went on to start taking hormone replacement therapy cope 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 <laughs> you think that's cope you think that's <laughs> i do you're, you're gonna be out here taking estrogen no dude okay okay <laughs> I mean, that's just my personal opinion i have nothing okay. to base that on that's just that's how i feel about it like uh, you're really going to be out here t- modifying your body potentially fertilizing your uh, fertilizer jesus christ uh yeah. and becoming infertile mm-hmm. and uh just because you know lol uh hrt femboy tee uhu like okay that's 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 the uh, that's a decision you can make your own decisions you're an adult but you're highly suspicious of, of someone going to that extreme as far I don't as get it. uh and you could either they can either be totally misunderstanding of what hrt does to your body or it's a coping mechanism okay okay how do you feel about pride or uh the more vocal lgbt people who are into being activists or heavily involved in anything regarding LGBT culture, because you see some people who distance themselves from the identity politics regarding their sexuality and prefer to stay under the, under the radar. Where do you fit between those two extremes? Um, I'm fine with pride. Um, some people are very boisterous about who they are and they want to express themselves, and that's fine. Um, definitely be who you are Uh, who am i i am someone who i i I was i always was a person who decided to never do those kinds of events i i never want to kind of align myself like that however i've noticed throughout throughout my life that i am kind of a good rallier and i'm good to organize and help people come together and so i have been more outspoken in terms of pro pride and things like that um, with that said, I don't want pride to be a fetish thing. I think that people take it too far, and it, it kind of puts a, a black mark on what it should be. But I, um, yeah, pro pride. If I had to put myself on a spectrum here, it's pro pride. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely the other. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the the other side because, uh, you know, me myself, uh, as someone who's uh, uh, into like trap porn and transsexual porn and, and whatnot i will be considered on the uh spectrum somewhere uh depending on who you ask but i don't really make a big deal about it like i'm, I'm definitely That's not fine. with i'm definitely not with the whole uh rainbows and, and flags and, and stuff like that and um i think part of it is is just like you know as i was growing up believing that i was 100 percent heterosexual you know heterosexual people don't get involved in, in stuff like that like there, there is no hetero pride there is no flags or or parades and stuff for for that and, and so i think my view of sexuality is is heavily influenced by that so that when i got to it to the point where uh i began to uh reflect on my own sexuality um i just I just never felt like I had to go to that that other that other extreme in terms of like okay uh let me go get a flag or something to express th- this new aspect of my sexuality. I I just I'm just not really a fan of it. So <laughs> Yeah, that's, no, that's fine. Uh, that's, the reason why there's no I used to be on that kind of fence where I kind of wanted there to be like straight pride and all that stuff. Um, but then you come to realize the only reason why those prides exist in the first place is because they are, um, you know, it was like, it was wrong, right? It was wrong to be this. It's wrong to be that. You can't do this. And so yeah. finally, you know, we're at a point where it's accepting enough where you can come out and be that. And so pride is kind of like a breaking a boundary sort of thing where, hey, look at me. I am this and I'm proud of it. 
whereas heterosexuality isn't something that was ever really suppressed. So there wasn't a quote quote reason for there to be a, a pride. Yeah. With that said, be proud, dude. If you're straight and you love it, fuck yeah, yell out from the rooftop. I don't care. Just don't uh, put down gay people. Uh, and we're gonna all we'll all we'll all live together happily. That's how I feel. And I think all the same too. Uh, um, it provides a space for people to feel uh, more comfortable with who they are. Like just knowing yeah. there's there's a community for me. Like, I guess it could be seen as, as and I know this isn't nearly as serious, but it could be seen as like what a, a anime con would be for people who are really into anime. When you go to like, if you're really mm -hmm. into anime and you go to an anime con, you just, you feel like you're at home as opposed to now it's different now that, that anime has become so mainstream, but there was a time when anime was for nerds. But if you live, oh, yeah. I remember. If, yeah. If you lived during that time and you went to a con, you know, like you were amongst your own kind. So I think that's the positive aspect of the whole pride thing is that it provides a space, a community and environment for people who might have grown up in the area where they felt kind of smothered by uh, the pressure to be a certain way, to be a certain way that they, they weren't inclined to be. So I'm not saying it's like, like it's a bad thing. I'm just saying like me personally, I just, I don't vibe with, with it. like, I never saw my sexuality as being something that was really important. That's part of the reason why I'm still a virgin, why I'm still single, because I, I, never, <laughs> I never really had like, a, like my sense of, my sense of identity was never really wrapped up in, in anything sexual, even regarding uh, women, you know, I kind of, uh, I was always kind of a MGTOW type guy, even when I was a teenager. So uh, yeah, I think that's, that's totally fine. You don't have I to think, be. Yeah, I think that's why I'm the way that that I am. But I, w I was a little worried though because I kind of felt like, uh, like if if I'm bisexual, people would expect me to be like a flag waving <laughs> rainbow. Nah, that's, that's weird. You know, like I was like, that's just that's not for me. I mean, like, yeah, I like tranny porn and shit, but I'm not trying to go to the extreme of of doing all yeah. that extra shit. You know. <laughs> That's totally fine. Yeah, fuck it. Okay. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Okay, so hold up. Uh, okay, so now this is this is something I always wanted to ask. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, so because I've had more sensitive types get upset with me for for saying this. So, but so mm -hmm. okay. But uh, I like girls, but I also have a thing for transsexuals. But one thing about transsexuals that I think makes them stand out is that I find them to be more approachable and easy to talk to. And um, this is where some people may feel offended. But I think that even though transsexuals go on to identify as female, you were still raised and socialized as a boy in a lot of, in, in a lot of different ways. Um, and I believe that a lot of that never completely gets scrubbed away, even after the process of transitioning. And, and that's why I think some guys feel more at ease dealing with or communicating with transsexuals compared to, uh, but, uh, vagina girls. How do you feel about that, that particular idea? That's just, um, a, that's just, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's just a theory that I've always had personally. I think it comes from, uh, so like you're more familiar and like you're more comfortable with the homies, right? Like with the bros, like yeah. you, you're never going to have a hard time walking up to a bro and be like, yo bro, let's yeah. do bro things. Yeah. Um, so now this comes from a place where you would know in advance, you know, that X person is trans before interacting with them. So maybe you're more comfortable with approaching that person. That's not the case for someone who you don't know is trans or you don't know is a transgender person. You're still yeah. going to have that same feeling um, as if you're approaching just a regular cis woman. Now, I know there's a lot of people who are going to be like, oh, you can tell, you can tell. And yeah, you can for a couple of people, but for others, you can't. Um, I, I mask at work um, because I just don't want to catch COVID. My family has a really bad immune system. Um, and coincidentally that my lower half of the face is what clocks me the most so when i mask well okay let me rephrase that i haven't gotten clocked ever 
um, for like two years. Uh, so, but when I'm in public, people approach me and treat me cis, and that's completely normal to me. In fact, I've had conversations with people who I was like, okay, they know I'm trans. The jig is up. And then I'll talk to them like, hey, you like, you know, I have this issue, right? You know, as a trans person, yada, yada. And they're like, wait, you're, you're trans? And I was like, oh my fucking God, I just outed myself. Okay, well, yes. So there are trans people who kind of stealth in the wild and you don't know. And I'm sure you would have that same apprehension going up to that person because it's not one of the bros. It's this, this whole thing is a manifestation within your mind to become more comfortable with the person. Now, are there, uh, is there, is there valid arguments to be made where, yeah, we were raised differently um, than a traditional girl would be raised or a traditional boy would be raised? Yeah, uh, there, there is that argument. And you probably do have more in common with us. Yeah, and... Um, and but that, that's and, an added and, benefit. Yeah, I just noticed that, like, when... When I look at, uh, for example, when transsexuals express like their interests in like nerdy hobbies and whatnot, like they're into it to like that same deep level that a lot of guys tend to be into it. And like, I'm not saying girls, vagina girls are never into video games and, and, and whatnot, but it's hard to find, it seems, it seems like it's hard to find girls who are like into it to the same depth that men tend to be in terms of being into more like niche titles like like certain games or certain certain uh books or anime and then when i look at transsexuals it's like they have that same level of interest in in uh in in hobbies or things that guys tend to be into or cis men if you will and my theory has just has just has always been that again as we're growing up the sexes are kind of segregated. Like when you're in elementary school and we're on the playground, the boys with the boys, the girls with the girls, uh, you go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom with the boys and the girls go to the bathroom with the girls, the lunch table, the girls with the girls. Like, And I feel like maybe perhaps a, a lot of that is why even after transitioning, it seems like to me that transsexuals is always have like this, like, like there's this, it, it, it's it's some of some of that homie is still there. I can't, yeah, I can't. Uh, that's how that's how that's how I always saw it. But maybe somebody at the same would... time though. How how many times have you gone to um, an anime convention or from Apple Magic the Gathering? Gone to a pro tour or to a PTQ? There's tons of uh, men and women there, um, and a lot of those people are way more knowledgeable about stuff than I am half the time, uh, and that comes from both of the genders. Uh, on, on, on a surface level, like if you're just, you know, grazing over it, yeah, obviously uh, a lot of those more nerdy hobbies, quote, quote, are going to be more heavily male dominated. Yes. But when you go into the fandoms, like when you go to those cons and you see the cosplayers or the people running the booths or the artists or the players playing magic or the, the side tables that are running and you see men and women there who've been playing for years and years and years, you know, you're going to you're going to meet that exact same amount of enthusiasm from cis women or for vagina girls as you would say but, but, um, vagina, vagina girls yeah you're, you're gonna see that same level yeah. of enthusiasm from people there you just have to meet the right people and be around the same the right spaces i'm not saying that it never happens that's that's not it, it's just right yeah i'm just saying from a surface level you're gonna on, it's on, more likely than not yeah like in my yeah. own in my own personal life i've never ran into a girl that gave a fuck about uh something like persona or or even like final fit like i've never met any girls who were into anything um like that and and you see that's super weird because i have the opposite experience like i know a lot of cis women who are very very into that and very into like nerd culture um mm -hmm. it's it, it just it's it's about who you surround yourself with that's yeah. entirely the thing it, yeah Maybe I'm just too heavily influenced by my particular environment, but I just don't meet girls who are into stuff like that. Most of the girls I meet are into more like, uh, you know, uh, reality television, pop culture things, uh, everything pertaining to the enhancement or modification of their own beauty, drama, social drama, gossip. That, that's, you know, just very typical uh, women things. I don't meet a lot of girls who are into, who are into like... Uh, you know things that i'm into 
You gotta look at the right. You got that. You have to look at the right places. That's all. You just, okay. you're, you you gotta be in the right spots. Okay. You know. You know. It's funny. My uh, some of my friends have have said uh something similar. They said I need to go to a different environment because <laughs> that's what I'm it like, is. I, 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 mm-hmm. I I'm like the the black guy, like the the nerdy black guy, but uh, <laughs> who's in the hood. I can I can guarantee <laughs> so, you. Like, I can hook anybody up with some, not anybody, but most people up with someone like-minded of, the, of another gender. I am just so ingrained in just different in, uh, cultures and communities. Uh, and I just meet tons of people. Um, so it's no, it, that's why I come, it's not, I'm not surprised to hear your point of view on this. Um, but I, I will 100% say it, it is depending on where you are and where you're looking. You've had a different experience overall, like you're dramatically you, different. Experience. Yeah, you've met a more diverse cast of, of of women and men in your life. Yeah, my first girlfriend was actually the person who got me into um, uh, retro gaming. I, I say retro gaming, but just gaming from my childhood that I never played those games. It's like Mega Man and stuff like that specifically. I was never super into it, but she was. And yeah. so, like, she taught me everything, and then we cosplayed together, and it was super cool. Um, so, like, and that's just not, I wasn't even looking. It just, I was involved in a certain space, and I found certain people, and then through her and I, we expanded our horizons and met other people who were into other things. So, you, once you plant the seed, once you get in there and you see that environment, it, it just blossoms further and further, and you meet more people. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go to an anime con. Honestly, yeah. Go to an anime con cosplay, even if it's shitty. Talk to some people there, see if you click. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. So what are your favorite hobbies? Like, give me your three favorite hobbies. Um is sleeping a hobby? <laughs> sleeping. No. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> what is this? High school? Let's see. I mean I wish. Um my favorite hobby is I really enjoy rock climbing. Rock climbing super fun. That's badass. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I enjoy video games like um, computer gaming or video gaming, mostly computer gaming, and music. I play music. So those are the three things that I think are super cool. Do you have a particular genre of video game that you prefer over the rest? Um. It's a tie between ARPG and MMORPG. Did you, did you say ARPG? Yeah, uh, action role playing games. So like Diablo. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. What type of music are uh, you say? You play music? Yes, I play so, in a band. I don't know if I should name drop my band, but I play in a band. Oh, you, you, hey, look, you go ahead and name drop your free promo. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess so. If you want to look it up, uh, I mean, I hope this doesn't come anywhere and we, we get a ton, of, a ton of weird people, weird hate. Oh, um, oh, oh certainly, certainly not. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that, but I play for a band called The Toss Ups. Uh, yeah. We are a uh, punk rock band. Uh, yeah, I, I play bass guitar. Okay, I do music too, but I do rap. I, you know, I guess it's kind of stereotypical of a word. Yeah, I love it. But yeah, I do well, rap. not really. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I rap, I make beats, stuff like that. I'm pretty dope if I do say so myself. Yeah. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. So uh did you enjoy our conversation? Was I respectful and friendly or was I the bigoted asshole that you expected me to be? Uh well I didn't have any expectation. I didn't know what what this was going to be going into it. Uh I thought you were pretty respectful for the most part. For the some most of part. the uh some of your phrasing was odd. Uh, you know, <laughs> Bajana, kind of reminds me of an Archer. Bajana yeah, Bajana. and that's one of them. Right, yeah. Normal. You said a normal a couple of times when describing just men of a sexual preference, which was, again, just a little bit weird to me. That would that would imply that the sexual preference towards transgender person is an abnormal sexual preference. I mean, uh, and, and, but um, I'm not an NSJW. I'm not going to hop on anything. Like, I don't care. You can have whatever your opinion is. It's totally fine. I, I, uh, well, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You wouldn't say that it's, it's now... I'm talking about in terms of like society, like that's it, it will be considered kind of abnormal, generally speaking, for a man to have a preference for transsexuals, right? Um, I mean, I guess on. it would be as it would be as abnormal as a man 
in, in, in this case, a man who has a sexual preference towards uh, people with disabilities. So someone who someone who seeks out someone in a wheelchair, for example. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I would go out on a limb and say, oh, that person is not normal. I would yeah, say, not, like, no. maybe their fetish is a little bit weird. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that that man is not normal. Yeah, if if I if I say that, I'm not saying that to to express that somehow you know having that sort of attraction makes you less or something like that. I mean, dude, I got like a ton of tranny porn on my hard drive, so I'm I'm not. One to, <laughs> I'm I'm not. Yeah, I'm not I, one I, to I, I wasn't implying that you were. I'm just saying like the way certain things are said or the way certain phrases were said uh, could lead someone down uh, a rabbit hole of name calling or just trying to say something mean, you know, uh, that that's all. And that's not who I am. I'm, I, I'm very easy to get along with, I think. Oh and, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do, I do, I do recall though, now that you say that, um, while trying to find somebody to interview, I got into this, this discussion with somebody about, uh, like Bridget from Guilty Gear and, uh, him being going, trans. Yeah. And then like, oh, like the person I was talking to, like, they 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 were calling me an idiot and a moron and all of this and that. For I'm what? Like, I'm just dude, just talking to you. How I'm how, like we were chatting, so it was like it was all like text. It was all it was all over text, but I think it's just like the way I express myself sometimes. Like I again, I'm not like this politically correct type person and so maybe the way i say certain things or so, some of my opinions uh could rub somebody the wrong way that's why i made sure that i asked this question at the very end because i always try to like i'm trying to figure out like how how do uh transsexuals uh respond to me uh when i have like a serious discussion with them like because I don't personally. I feel like I'm one of the nicest people in the world, but it seems like uh, sometimes people feel like I'm I'm too insensitive somehow. Um, I mean, it's I don't want to say it's a new space, but it's definitely a space that's been more public and exposed than it ever has been, and so people just aren't familiar or like sure about how to approach it or how to say certain things, and it's going to take a lot of time, probably beyond my lifetime, for people to kind of understand that, and that's okay. That's that's totally okay. Like. Like yeah, it is what it is. You know, you're not doing anything out of balance, of course. I could tell. So I remember one time somebody got mad at me because I said tranny, and like now all of a sudden tranny is a slur, and I I, I didn't get the memo, and I just throw that around like oh tranny porn, yeah tranny porn. I didn't, but somebody told um, me oh that's that's a slur, and I'm like when did that happen? Like, <laughs> like well uh, you can consider it so. Similar to the way how faggot was kind of reclaimed by gay people, but it's still kind of a slur to call someone a faggot. Uh -huh. um, tranny is kind of the same way. Okay. And but in my mind, I just don't see it that way because, like, it, it's just I never saw like it as a negative word. I just saw it as a as a descriptive term, a different way of of saying transsexual. Like, yeah, but at the same time, like, you know, we're, we're, we're both kind of 4chan aficionados in our own ways. Like, you've seen the threads that are, that are pretty anti-trans people, and you know how Oh, oh yeah. It's like, it's, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not oh, wow. A tranny this, tranny that. It's not pretty. And yeah. so that, that it's, it's definitely used in a negative connotation a lot of the time. And that, I think that's where that comes from. Okay, okay. But, but if I... It doesn't offend me. Okay, I'm just making sure, because... That's you know, cause I just always try to be respectful of, of people when I when I deal with them, even if we don't agree on everything. You know, I always try sure. to put I always try to put uh respect first, but at the same time I'm kinda loose. I'm kinda loose with with my tongue <laughs> because So it's funny, I kinda have the other problem. I do try to be respectful, um, but I have opinions that are just kinda disrespectful sometimes and so I'll just be like, Okay, here's my opinion, probably disrespectful, but I feel this way about certain things, and if that's not good enough, then you don't no, have to be my friend. I, yeah, I I think that's I think that's perfectly fine. In fact, I think that's probably the best way to go about it. That's probably the, the best way because you know then you get to be around the people that you actually vibe with instead of someone yeah. that you're not really you know on the same page with. So yeah, that was uh those were the questions that I had for you, uh, Nicole. For sure, thank you. 
I'm I'm glad you gave me some of your time uh, and yeah. g- gave me further insight into the trans the, the uh, tranny phenomenon. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. And if you ever hey. want me back, I'm more than willing to come on back. Hey, that's great. I had a had a great time speaking with you, Nicole. Yeah, thank you. Me too. Okay, so uh, you know, time for the awkward goodbye. So uh, goodbye. <laughs> okay.